الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید الانبیاء والمرسلین اما بعد السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ تعالی وبرکاتہ ویلکم تو دی جامعہ الکرم انیوال لائف ٹیلیتھون وی آر پاسنگ تھرو ڈیفیکلڈ اینڈ چیلنجنگ سرکمسٹانسز We have lost many lives and many people are suffering across the world. This Ramadan is an immense opportunity for us to reflect as a community as well as as individuals. It is an opportunity for us to use the Islamic concept of sadaqa and charity to dispel this affliction and suffering. Jamil al-Karam is a story of the British Muslim community led by a learned scholar. Jamil al-Karam is an educational establishment which has vision and has an understanding of the ground realities and of the various communities that make up our collective society and it seeks to serve and contribute without seeking headline initiatives. Back in 1985 in Milton Keynes, Jami Al-Karam was established by a learned scholar, its founder and principal, Sheikh Muhammad Imdad Hussain Pirzada. Very humble beginnings, five students in one terraced house in New Bradwell, in Milton Keynes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted this adventure and this initiative divine acceptance. And so, in 1995, Jami al-Karam moved and relocated to its present location, which is the 30-acre site of Eaton Hall in rural Nottinghamshire. The expansion saw the initiation of the Al-Karam Secondary School for Boys, which produced outstanding results and on many occasions topped the Nottinghamshire GCSE League table. From that school, hundreds completed their secondary education and then pursued various careers in medicine, in law, in engineering, and accountancy, and so on. Within a few years, in 1999, Jami Al-Karam gained academic affiliation with the world's oldest Islamic center of learning and university, the Al-Azhar al-Sharif in Egypt. In 2008, Jami Al-Karam was able to open its doors for the course of Islamic scholarship for our sisters and the daughters of the Muslim community. In 2012, the historic center of Al-Azhar appreciated and appointed Jami Al-Karam as the European and Western branch of the World Organization for Al-Azhar graduates to represent the historic Al-Azhar tradition in the Western world. Since 1985 up until today, over 430 young British, male and female ulama, Islamic scholars, have graduated. Today they serve in numerous capacities all over the United Kingdom as well as in many European countries. This marks 35 years of continuous contribution and service. But this was not possible alone. Rather, the success and achievement of Jami al-Karam is a collective achievement for it benefits from the support and the contribution of the entire British Muslim community. The educational model that Jami al-Karam symbolizes is based on the original prophetic model of education when Rasulullah educated and nurtured a generation in the Masjid of Nabawi in Medina.
these companions who were trained in knowledge by the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are known as the Ashab al Sufa. The prophetic model of education is such that one party, one group of people from amongst the community dedicate their lives and devote themselves towards the learning and teaching. And the rest of the community takes upon its contractual obligation of covering the costs and the expenses of this important group of people. This was the prophetic model that was in effect at the time of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Such a group of people of scholars who are learning and teaching is of such importance that no matter what kind of situation the Muslim community finds itself in, this group of people was to remain dedicated towards the pursuit of ilm, knowledge, learning and teaching. Because if you remove this group of people who are engaged in learning and teaching from the community, then the entire community itself fails. Zakat and Sadaqah are essential obligations of our religion. It is no doubt our duty as a community and as individuals to forward the Zakat and Sadaqah contribution to those who are most deserving within our local region in line with the Quranic framework of the recipients of Zakat. It is worth noting the words of the 13th century Hijri Hanafi jurist scholar Imam Ibn Abidin al-Shami who in his important legal work the Radd al-Muhtar very clearly described the recipients of Zakat and the importance of the scholars when he said that the religion becomes weak by the absence of scholars. So we are here today together in this live telethon to appeal today for your ongoing and continuous help and support of Fujami al Karam, which follows the prophetic model of educating the next generation. The Jami al Karam that we are all supporting today is the achievement and the success and the responsibility of the whole community. I finish with a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which highlights the relationship between the ulama and the generous donors who contribute so that they can pursue learning. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that on the day of judgment, four individuals will come to the gate of paradise without any accountability. Meaning, they would not have faced any accountability for they would have achieved the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will arrive at the gate of paradise, but then they will differ on which one of them would enter paradise first. The four individuals are, the first, the pilgrim, a haji who performed the hajj of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is a martyr, a shaheed, who died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third is someone who is a sakhi, a generous individual. And the fourth is an alim, a scholar who acts upon his knowledge. So these four individuals, Rasulullah informed us, will come at the gate of paradise, but then will differ as to who will enter paradise first. At that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will instruct the Archangel Jibreel to go and decide between them in a manner that is most fair. So Jibreel alayhi salam will come and he will ask the martyr, the shaheed, why is it that you think you should enter paradise first? The shaheed will respond by saying, I gave the most precious commodity that I had. I gave the most precious thing that I had, which was my life. I gave the blood of my veins in battle for the sake and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, defending my nation, my country and my religion. So therefore, I am deserving of entering paradise first. Upon this, Jibreel alayhi salam will question him, from whom did you hear that if you gain martyrdom seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will enter paradise? The shaheed will respond by saying, the scholars. Then Jibreel 
alayhi salam will say, if that is the case, then be respectful and step back and do not proceed and go ahead of your teacher. In the same manner, Jibreel alayhi salam will question the other two individuals, the Sakhi, the generous one, and the pilgrim, the Haji. And he will say to them in the same manner, that be respectful both of you and step back, do not proceed and go in front of your teacher. It is at that moment that the alim, the scholar will speak out and say, Ya Allah, it is indeed true that I gave my whole life to learn your religion and then to teach your religion. But it's also true that had it not been for the generosity and the donations and the contributions of the generous individual, I would not have been able to pursue this path of sacred knowledge. At that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out by saying, the alim has spoken the truth. O Ridwan, the custodian angel of Jannah, O Ridwan, open the gate to paradise and allow the generous one to enter paradise first. Today is our opportunity to contribute in the sacred month of Ramadan towards Jami al Karam and to ensure that following the historical traditional prophetic model, we pass on this religion to the next generation. Akulu kawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.